definitely not the starters. You're on the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Yeah, that's right. Let it rain. It is the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score and DoubleTSportsNetwork.com. Don't forget about the mobile app brought to you by Happy State Bank. Happy Thursday morning to you. Thank you for joining us. We are live for three hours here from the first United Bank studio. You can join us in on the conversation on the H. Flooring Center chat line. You can also call us on the Visual Edge IT hotline, 806-771-0973. You can check us out if you want to see our bright and shining faces on the mobile app. You can also watch us on Fox 34 News Now and on YouTube. And if you have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you can follow, you can follow us there. Already on the chat line from Bullfighter Thursday Ruin. Glad I could ruin it for you. Clint Scott in No, this man. <laughs> Quick draw. Jeez. Jeff Come on, Hacks. Bullfighter. Give us a chance. Jeff Haxton. Oh, it's not you. It's just the one to your left. Lucas Wyatt behind the glass. Gentlemen, how's our Thursday uh, morning treating us? It's going pretty good. Got up early. Got the boy to uh, basketball practice. They lost last night to Dunbar by one point. Ooh. Uh it's, it's pretty interesting because they played the title game for the middle school championship in football, and uh, our guys got the best of them bar, and they were really tore up about it because I saw them walking through the Plains Capital Park uh, uh, stands, and most of them were crying. And So the first game of the basketball season, mm-hmm. rematch, and uh, I guess it was, it was pretty wild for uh, seventh grade <laughs> basketball last night, but... Of course, I missed it, but uh, got the stories when I got home. So, I uh, got him to practice and looking forward to this show and being with you and yeah. talking some hoop because that's uh, – I know it's it's football season, but, man, that was a lot of fun last night. It was obviously great to see Christian Anderson and Elijah Hawkins on the court for the first time. It just felt to me, Hacks, like instantly – instantly different still from what you've already seen you've seen a lot of positives but man like we we're talking before the show i didn't realize how twitchy mm. elijah hawkins is and just uh, you know we, we knew he was a smaller guard uh you know and I, I don't know how many of us were just faithfully watching minnesota who lost to north texas last night we have something on that a little bit oh later. yeah yeah i saw that <laughs> but uh I, I mean you can already see the upside with him and he is a small guard, but it already looks like he's making up for it. And just the, the the skill and instantly, to me, the flow that he added into the offense was as promised. Well, and you have some guys on this team that, um, that are going to turn into crowd favorites because of guys like Elijah Hawkins. And I'm really focusing on Federico. Federico is, mm-hmm. um, you know, he, he needs some help to score. He's not going to, you know, back anybody down, I don't think. Um, he's not going to certainly shoot jump shots. But if you want to throw it up to the rafters and let him go dunk it on an alley-oop, we saw that several times last night. That gets the crowd going big time, especially in Big 12 games when everything's on the line. So uh, very impressed with how it changed the ball uh, defense, uh, defending the ball along the perimeter. That was a complete change from what we'd seen and you're right I, I it is amazing what two guys can do one about as young as you can get and one about as old as you can get uh, Anderson's family was there they had Deutschland basketball uh, zip ups on after the game so they're pretty easy to to mark on on who that family is but i um, glad they were here to watch him and you know first shot he takes is a three he hits it um, you know, uh, I, I know Wyoming's not great, but, um, still just to, um, you know, just own the, the entire night, the way they did was uh, a lot of fun. I, I haven't been this excited about, uh, tech basketball team in, in, in a while. I know last year was a really good team. Um, you know, finishing the way that they did in the league and getting to the NCAA tournament. And, but I have a feeling this, the sponge could be special. 
it, it feels like this staff did a terrific job of self-analyzing what they weren't very good at last year and really going after that uh, either through the portal or with some freshmen. And it feels like, okay, well, you, you certainly needed a guy that can facilitate the offense and can, when things are stagnant and uh, when things are just kind of like glue on the court, who's a guy that can kind of get that going? It feels like you probably have a couple of guys now that way. Weren't great inside, weren't always great rebounding. You added a bunch of big bodies and guys who could rebound the ball. And now it also feels like you can score at every level, and it's not going to be that way every single night, especially when you get into Big 12 play. You know, It's not going to be just 96 sure. points night in and night out, but it feels like you have enough there that if one phase is faltering, you have enough to lean on another phase to go get you a win, where I don't think you necessarily had that last year. Yeah, you've gone from 16 threes to um, seven threes, and um, uh, Darian Williams has shown himself to be uh, unselfish to the point where whatever needs to be done, he can do, and he can do all of whatever you want him to do again and what he need him to do um but that's what i was talking about on my way out of the arena with andrew stern who's the sid for texas tech soccer uh, because we got soccer coming up tomorrow that's right. and uh nca tournament at the walker and um we're like hey i mean at least right now we got guys that can shoot it from three we've got guys that can shoot mid-range we've got guys that can score with their back to the basket one in J.C. Toppin. <laughs> but that's let's be honest, these days that's more than a lot of teams have. That's that's one more than most people in, in yeah. basketball at almost every level. Now. And I, I love the it, – it didn't result in an immediate basket, but I love the wrinkle that he throw, threw in because he's been able to kind of own these mid-major teams by backing down, backing down, backing down, just go over the right shoulder and score with the left. The little up and under move – that was a nice wrinkle to see yeah. because he went back down, back down, right shoulder up, duck under, air ball delay up, but to himself, and then put it up and in. Um, he goes for 24 and 12. and uh, What a start from him. I mean, worth, worth, worth the money man. so far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> worth it. Uh, this, uh, this roster, too, you know, you, you noted – Elijah Hawkins and there there's some guys there that could be the quote unquote hey this is my favorite Red Raider this year it, it does feel like just from like the fan side I think you have uh, a lot of guys that could end up being that and it may just be depending on you know individually and it could be like hey here's a 33 percent 33 percent 33 percent split between these three guys when it's all said and done of who's like the favorite Red Raider on this team but I, I think you also have a lot of guys play style that are just enjoyable to watch and uh, hopefully you know it's going to lead to a bunch of wins so far it's been a really good start like you said wyoming uh it by no means is uh is this great awesome just world beater but still the way that you you beat them from even from the first two wins to last night i mean 17 turnovers at the half and causing all sorts of issues with your defense that was fun to see yeah yeah we looked up and and just all the points off turnovers i think 33 something like that <laughs> Um, that was, that was something else. And you were, you were really in their, in their heads and, and more importantly in their passing lanes mm -hmm. and they couldn't run anything that they wanted to run. It ended up being just kind of a one-on-one -on -one show with the Agbim guy. And, um, even though Lucas looks like a Wyoming cowboy this morning in there, he had a, does. had a great day. Yeah. <laughs> Not even smile, boy. <laughs> It's the end of the bench on 100.7, the score. Definitely not the starters. You're on the end of the bench podcast from 100.7, the score. It is a Thursday edition of the end of the bench here on 100.7, the score. Clint Scott, Jeff Haxton, Lucas White behind the glass taking care of us. Uh, and hey, it is a wonderful Thursday today for many reasons, one of which we get the start of of high school football playoffs tonight and we got a few games it's crazy on how busy tonight. tonight is oh man we we are more busy on our airwaves tonight than we are tomorrow just one game tomorrow with friendship in el paso montwood you can hear that one six o'clock double t 97.3 but tonight 
Idaloo and Tulia will start at 5 o'clock. Sunny 97.7. Monterey will take on El Paso Fresh Prince of Bel Air at 5.30 on 93.7 The Eagle. And at 6.30 tonight, here on 100.7 The Score, Lubbock Cooper taking on El Paso Conatillo. I feel like I nailed that one. I'm gonna Did guess. you hear the names for those Wyoming players last night? <laughs> yeah. Dude. <laughs> I've texted Lovell afterwards. Because Lovell was on TV and I was on. Ah, uh, oh, I left it. It was, a, it was the toughest team. You know, usually you have one or two. Yeah. They had five that were like, check your frenetic. Check your frenetic. Let's see if I so, Obi Agbim, not easy, not easy. Tuco Tainamo, 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 not uh, easy. <laughs> my personal favorite here, just looking at it. And Ibu Bay. Oh, okay. He was great. That's a great name. I like that it's Scotty Abube. I don't know why. I just love that. But <laughs> Oleg Kojanets, Kojanets, perhaps. Koyanets. Koyanets. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> like something you get in a uh, a dessert platter at Christmas. <laughs> you get a handful of those Koyanets right there. <laughs> ah, they're cherry filled. Ah, these are the worst Koyanets I've ever had. Uh, that's great. <laughs> Man, yeah. Uh, Abu Magasa. Mugaso. Yeah. Mugaso. Mm. <laughs> it just keeps going, man. That's incredible. That must have been, uh, and then you got a coach named Sundance. So I mean, you can uh, pronounce it, but that—that that is an all-time name, name team. Was Sundance. Oh, yeah, that's great. I, uh, I love that you want it, but uh, Chuck mentioned this, and I—I I didn't look at it at all. Were you looking by chance at like the handshake between Linder and his old team or stuff like that? There's a couple of fun moments that were noted. Yeah, they—they um, they were doing that long before the the tip off. Yeah, there was just there's so many crossover connections and a few guys that came with coach Linder to be GAs here. And, you know, we have 30 GAs, so, um, (laughs) you know, easy to cross over there, but, uh, you could also see why coach Linder would make that move. So if you're, if you're doing that, um, what he did, Come, you know, being a head coach, uh, Barrett Peary did this too. Let's not forget. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but don't get me started on that whole situation. Um, but if you're doing that, your thought process is we're going to be so good that I'm going to get noticed too, mm-hmm. and I'm going to get a lot of credit as well. And we're going to go make deep runs into the NCAA tournament and I'm going to get an even better head coaching job than I could. If I, if I stay at Wyoming, sure. I'm the head coach, but I'm going to have to win a game in the NCAA tournament to get really noticed or have an incredible mountain West season here the spotlight shines so much brighter because of the big 12. And I'm telling you, this guy can coach. Mm -hmm. He can coach. Mm -hmm. So that, well that, uh, and, and you know what? That's crazy. You probably got a nice raise. Yeah. Well, and I, I would look at, you know, what you're saying and the, the non power five ceiling, it is, I mean like the, the Pat Kelsey types, I mean, what are the percentage of who is the Pat Kelsey type and who isn't? And it maybe it's not because those other guys aren't good coaches, but like just the ceiling that you have at some of those schools. And now, now that resources have gotten drastically and drastically just more and more separated from those levels to like where you are over here, uh, I, I could totally see and probably would lean towards. I would probably make the same decision if you know if I was wanting to to break the ranks and get into where I was coaching an ACC, a Big 12, a Big 10, you know, whoever uh, type school or, or, you know, even uh, over in the Big East or something like that. You could see why that would be a better stepping stone to that. And it's just wild to think of that as the thought process where 
on the outside looking in, you go, well, he was a head coach. Don't you know, you know, it could be a smaller school head coach, a bigger school head coach. Well, if you're the assistant for a really good program and doing a lot of nice things and has all this support and you're in the best basketball conference in America, that is a faster track if you have success. Sometimes it doesn't work. There are examples of that. Dane Fife was the, here we go back to Indiana. He was the head coach <laughs> at IPFW and did a really good job, got them to be respectable. Um, but bolted in 2022 to go be an assistant at Indiana, um, trying that kind of same deal we're talking about with Jeff Linder. Um, but I, I, let's see, where is he now? I think he just kind of hung it up and disappeared. Mm. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> Let's, uh, oh, he went to Michigan State. That's right. Uh, That's right. And then Indiana. Okay. So IPFW, Michigan State with Izzo, and then Indiana. Hmm. I, I wonder what the, uh, what the percentage, like the hit percentage is of that route of going head coach to assistant at a much bigger school to actually getting like that job level that they had in mind. We can go back to that. Uh, who, who's doing the stats for uh, <laughs> the Cade Cunningham thing throughout those numbers? Let's yeah, get, let's get, get on a that. guy for that. Get on it. Lucas, you're that guy, right? You're also our guy to uh, hit the calendar button. Let's take a look there. Your daily look at what's happening in the world of sports, birthdays, and holidays. Let's check the calendar. Guinness World Records Day, International Girls Day, International Tempraneo Day. That one of the names on Wyoming basketball team. <coughs> yeah. He throws it down to Tempranillo. <laughs> Out to Coyonets. <laughs> Nothing but Coyonets. Oh, man. Clear Jets. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, that was pretty funny about the, the Christmas platter. <laughs> God, those Coyonets. Terrible. Oh, it's just the worst. Why do we keep bringing these? Loosen up, lighten up day. Okay. I could use that. National American Teddy Bear Day. Hey, Lucas has that on his hat today. Boom. He's celebrating. Dude, this I'm going to show you this picture. It looks almost exactly like your hat. <laughs> uh, family PJ Day. Uh, Are, have you? Oh, Jamie Lent Day here. National Pickle Day. hey Have you guys ever been like actual like pajama like what like the like the pajama set pajama wearers? No, never. I've never known anyone that's ever done that. No. Get your PJs on. Yeah. All right. Casey, here's, yeah. Here's my old here's my old chief shirt that has eighty seven holes in it. That's my PJs. My wife wears a shirt still. It's a softball shirt that she wore when we met in nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. She still wears it. I was like, I salute that shirt. <laughs> that thing <laughs> is the toughest son of a gun. Oh. I've got a hoodie that's on that path. I've had it since I was a sophomore in high school. I'm not going to tell you the school that's on it because I'll get yelled at. But it is barely hanging on. And every single time we've gone, like, every once in a while, we'll kind of do, like, the house cleanup sort of stuff. And Macy's always like, you sure you don't want to get rid of that hoodie? He's like, I'm sure. <laughs> it's staying in there. <laughs> it stays. It's got about ten more wears before it just fully disintegrates. Uh, happy birthday to Travis Barker. That's the best one. On this list, by far, as I go through. Uh, I wanted to get uh, oh, one yeah. more spicy guacamole day. Ooh, underrated. The fresh jalapeno in there. Don't be afraid. I mean, you got to dice them up small to me, but don't be afraid. Oh, I love that. Love that in the guac. Uh, oh, I, I lied. I missed. I would have missed a big one. 60 today. Our guy, Patrick Warburton. How about that? Shout out to uh, Kronk. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. It is the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score, double T Sports Network.com, and the mobile app brought to you by Happy State Bank. Clint Scott, Jeff Haxton, Lucas White behind the glass. Keep joining in on the conversation on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. You also have the Visual Edge IT hotline, 806 771 uh, bullfighter with a classic edit here. The Philip Seymour that's, Hansen here. Just, just quit it, dude. <laughs> Don't 
don't paperclip me ever again. <laughs> I like the usage of don't paperclip me. Accurate. Uh, minus that, what if I covered that up? It's just, it's just a, a, it's not even a full Sooner Red. It's like pink. It's had some wear and tear. Yeah. Any better with covering up the paper clip? No. Okay, I tried. I know what's there. <laughs> uh, old Razzle Dazzle had this. Do flamingos lay eggs? I would think so. <laughs> uh, Dion is the Florida of the Big 12. Always will be some crazy story coming from him and the state of Florida. It's a good point. Uh, yeah, the, the story today is Dion said he would do it in secret that uh, they asked uh, if he would sway NFL teams to not draft Shadur, to which he said, yes, I would. And uh, also he said he would do that with Travis Hunter, which is interesting because Hunter's got a great shot of being the top overall pick. Do you think he would actually, I mean, because whoever's going to be is going to be awful and going to be in a bad situation. Who knows uh, you know how high up a team, I, I don't know, like would, would he want either of those guys to go to the Cowboys or something like that? What what are the teams on his li- on his list that are like you're awful? Yeah, but just, you're but you're good enough for for these guys. I don't know. I that's that's a great question. I um I'm sure you would have to to pay them to get them to answer that question. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Give us 20 grand and we'll tell you. <laughs> um this team good, this team good, this team bad. I I I think they'll be choosy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Choosy moms choose Jif. And even then, it's so volatile. Like, how Jif. can you be so... Jif. Oh, man. We're, are we, we're going to see the return of Jif sometime soon. We got Jif. Uh, yeah, yeah. Show we got Coach Shok. He's got to be there. He's oh, living man. in luck. What do you do? Entrepreneur. <laughs> what? Entrepreneur. Yeah, bet you are, Andre. Oh, man. I'm Russian ex- Andre. I'm excited. For he always wishes me happy birthday on Facebook. I don't even use Facebook hardly, but he'll be there with a happy birthday instant message. I'm excited for the return of Russian Andre stories. It's like it's like basketball Christmas morning. It's a part of basketball culture for me at this point. Yeah. Uh, when is the next show? Well, it's, it, it's next Monday, Andre. Uh, let's uh, let's get burnt with some questions, shall we? Two minutes of non-stop, in-your-face inquiries with no end in sight. It's time for Burning Questions. All right, I have your uh, questions here today. And I'm going to start with something that was inspired by the morning drive. Uh, Towards the very end of their program, they were talking a little L.A. law. And Chuck was saying, you know, he would like, he, he he, he thinks he could have been a really good lawyer. So I'm going to ask you guys. Here at Raymar, what talent, if you had to pick one to represent you in a legal situation, would you have the most confidence in and would you have the least confidence in? Um, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go... Uh, you know, I, I, I went back last night and watched some of the old... Uh, specials that you and Fopple put together, the putting stroke, you know, and I got Chuck right, you know. <laughs> and Chuck came to mind to start here. But I don't think he would have the passion needed to represent me. The guy that has the most passion and that I think would be the most convincing and work the hardest is Chris Sneed. So give me Sneed as my representation. Uh, I think Jeff McGuire would sell me up the river and try to get me thrown in jail. (laughs) Jeff is on the other end of that. He would be the worst to represent me. He would be trying his darndest to get me convicted and do it in sneaky ways. Just like accidentally slipping up. Just like, you sure you didn't steal that? Wait, wait. That's not what you told me behind the river. (laughs) You told me something totally different. Hey, man, you're under oath. Come on. <laughs> I, well, I didn't mean anything by that. Sorry. <laughs> That's a good pick. Lucas? I agree with Haxton. I think Snead would be the best representative and the worst. 
I don't think he'd be the worst, but I don't think I would say choice. I don't know. Just <laughs> I don't think he'd be the absolute worst, but just something about him in a courthouse judge's chamber setting Cam- camo suit. Yeah, it just yeah. doesn't uh-huh. appeal to <laughs> Thinking about <laughs> shooting stuff me. instead of <laughs> representing his client. He shows up late. He's like, sorry, I, I, my bath will ran a, a little late. <laughs> he just rushes in, pops open a bag of corn nuts, and like, oh! I'd like to address the jury. <laughs> the whole courtroom reeks. <laughs> hey, you guys don't mind, like, during this recess, if I do a quick, you know, shot of Vienna sausage, right? You guys are cool with that? All right. I went, uh, I, I went, in my head, I went Gus for my representation, but I like the Sneed pick. I think Gus would be able to do. I think the Gus is very cerebral, yeah. but might tire, <laughs> might get a little bored. You, you went the same thought that I did for like the worst one. I would not have Jamie represent me because I think he would just he would find a way to make whatever like the minimum. Jamie would be second in line for me on anti representation. He would start out like, "Hey, what's the maximum penalty for this? <laughs> Let's up that. Can we ramp it up a little bit?" You know what else? You know what I heard that he did too. <laughs> Let's tack on these counts. <laughs> hey, man. Uh all right, there has been a battle of the noon kickoff in the land of the Big 10. Which I do want to get into the story a little bit later on, but I'm going to give you a couple what I would say ridiculous kick times. If Texas Tech had to kick every game, home and road, at either 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. all season long. Which one would it, which one would you rather it be? Um, uh, I hate both of them, but oh gosh, man, I'm a night owl. I'm a night owl. There's so much that goes into getting ready for college football. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm getting older by the minute and everything in life, I'm going 10 p.m. Lucas? I'm a night owl, man. Yeah. I would go the opposite. <laughs> yeah. I bet you if you put that, you got to put that as a poll question. Oh, yeah. That's a good, yeah. And I bet you it would be. 85% 10 a.m. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, the, the 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 tail, like the true tailgate. I know everyone will say, yeah, I enjoy tailgating, but like the hardcore I need to tailgate would certainly all be in for the 10 p.m. I would, I would guess just because you don't have any chance to at 10 a.m. Well, you know what, though? I think I of know. how much time you have after. Yeah, that's true. The post game. And now how cool these tailgates are. With satellite televisions and generators, I mean, you could you'd be back at your tailgate by one o'clock mm-hmm. and be real be ready to catch the early afternoon games, and then watch into the night and just tailgate however long you want. That's a good point. So I'm kind of burying my <laughs> argument, but again, I just ten's tough. That, 10 p.m. is tough, but I'm still I'm gonna stand by it. I think I would lean towards 10 a.m. too, only for the reasons I need to know how I need to feel the rest of the day. If I need to be celebratory, or if I need to be bummed out, and I don't have enough time to mentally you recuperate can't deal going with those into the night, it just too. bleeds into Sunday, and it's just well, it's just like last oh, night. Gosh. I mean, again, um, you pull off those broadcasts are almost four hours long, mm-hmm. and you're driving home, and you're like. You're tired, but tired, but wired. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know what you think on the H Flooring Center chat line. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Hour number three of the end of the bench here on 100.7 The Score, double T Sports Network.com and the 100.7 The Score mobile app. Almost said the wrong thing. Brought to you by our friends at Happy State Bank. You can watch us in the app just like you can watch us on Fox 34 News Now and on YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you can follow us on 107 The Score. Uh, You can join in on the conversation on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. 
Ask the Bench Warmers will round out our number three at 11.45. Make sure to give us your questions for that. You can also call us on the Visual Edge IT hotline, 806-771-0973. Glenn Scott, Jeff Haxton, Lucas White behind the glass. We are live from the first United Bank studio. A reminder, a World Series trophy edition of the bottom line will come up in an hour from now. Trophy will be in the parking lot, specifically from 1 to 3. They'll be out there the whole time. Come out uh, come out here. Come say hi. Come get a picture with the World Series trophy. That'll be awesome. Uh, try to talk Jamie into his secret handshake, something else that he'll love. Make sure it's as long as possible, like, like 30 seconds worth of secret handshake. Eye contact. <laughs> Deep eye contact. Serious. Get into that handshake. Shoulder grab. And follow uh-huh. follow with a shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it has to end with a shoulder grab. Also, if there's like pleasantries set in between two uh, while you're doing the handshake, that'll just be cherry on top right there. Sorry. I got a question about um, Thanksgiving potlucks. Okay. All right. So the sign-up sheet has been in the potluck. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the, the break room. It's been in there for a long time, probably two, three weeks. And there's probably 12 lines, and they all get full. People are going to bring this, 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 this. If you're like me, okay, you work here. I mean, this is your your gig. Mm-hmm. You're here all the time. They never let me leave. Lucas and I, we're not here all the time. We were, we're lucky if we get to show up <laughs> when we get to show up. <laughs> Can I snipe a little turkey and, and – uh, and some mashed potatoes, or oh, yeah, because I, I didn't bring anything to the to the to the feast. I think with what you're going for here is the the family family atmosphere sort of thing. The uh, hey, you know, we're all we're all one big happy family here, and we're all getting together and we're all having a good time. It would go totally against that, just like. Uh, you didn't even bring any koi nets. Sorry. Or no turkey for you. Didn't bring this. I mean, there's no, there's no. I mean, it's chicken. It's fried chicken. It's fried chicken. I like fried chicken. <laughs> I would love, love, if I could bring that in and just pop that line. There's nobody in the building that would understand it, but we would. Yeah. <laughs> also, just uh, thinking of like. If you did, like, you know, oh man, I, there, there's not enough, you know, there's not a line, there's nothing to sign up for. And you're like thinking on the way of, like, oh, what could I get? And it's like you stop at the uh, the colonel and just bring in an actual bucket of chicken. Like, I don't know, I got some chicken, so I'm just going to take some mashed potatoes and take yeah. some <laughs> Start diving in. Well, the, Here's a bag of Doritos. Does that buy me in? The Thanksgiving meal is my favorite full meal mm-hmm. of the 365 calendar. Now, my favorite food on earth is the barbecue beef pizza from Hideaway Pizza, the original in Stillwater. Um, but, like, if we're talking about, hey, we're going to have, you know, different things, because I can just eat that pizza. I mean, that's, that's all mm-hmm. I need. But um, the structure of the Thanksgiving dinner, lunch, is my favorite. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking I may break some um, protocol and and snare some things. The word protocol usually doesn't stretch into this part of the building. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's Not on of, this wing, anyway. Protocol. Is that like a dinosaur? I think extinct, maybe. Probably flew around a little bit. Yeah. Protocolicus. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, do you guys ever do like a mini Thanksgiving meal outside of Thanksgiving? We'll do this every once in a while like with a chicken. And I, I mean, just do our own little version because we'll mm-hmm. just get a hand cream for it. So that way we get it. It's just, it's so good. We're not going to go all out and just like, here's, and obviously when it's just like the two of us, we're not going to be like, we're going to do a 40 pound turkey right, right. here. <laughs> 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 this is going to feed us all year. And we'll also never be awake thanks to the trip to fan. Oh yeah. It's worth it. It's worth it uh, if you get the hand cream. It's supposed to be a little cold, little, mm-hmm. little Maybe a little uh, wet out there next week. Mm -hmm. It's throwing Uh, me off. I keep on thinking Thanksgiving is next week, and it keeps not being next week. keeps being – I don't know why I have this mindset. See, I've already marked out that whole next week because I'll be gone from Tuesday to Friday night. (laughs) Oh, right. Basically Tuesday to Saturday. So so basically next week, 
I'm not thinking about around here. I'm thinking about the next week. Mm-hmm. So anyway, have I mean, the parents down. I never get to host Thanksgiving. This will be mm. the second time in my entire life I'll I'll get that done. Um, first time in seven years that I'll be home for Thanksgiving. So yeah, good good stuff. Cool. When we heard uh, when I heard we were at Barclays, I was like, well, I hate New York City, but I am going to get that because of. When it is scheduled, I'm going to be able to to hang out with my with my crew yeah. here in Lubbock. That's going to be great. Cool. Yeah, that's my awesome. store opens next week. That's right. Yeah. The yeah. meats. You're over in where again now? The Canyon West Shopping Center, right next to Five Guys. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sweet. Now we have to make some uh, run over there. Uh, this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line, Chris uh, says, I hope Tyson ruins this dude's chances at another fight. <laughs> uh, this on the chat line, Wyoming has to be saying, we gave up our coach for that. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Sean asked, uh, said, Hacks, I hope you uh, didn't injure your tongue last night saying Wyoming names. It's like you were naming Star Wars characters. Ah, thank <laughs> God. That is great. That is a great description. <laughs> uh, you could have done some lightsaber noises in the broadcast. Could have done the... Live tonight from the Millennium Falcon. Uh, it is Red Raider basketball. What are the uh, what are the little sand creatures called? Like, ooh, ee, 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 oh, those guys. Oh man, not Jabba. Jawas. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going into Ewok territory, but no, 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 the, no, no. the, the, the Jawas bad. are way better than the Ewoks. I yeah, underrated. I, the sand people too. <laughs> They'll be back, and in greater number. Mm. <laughs> Uh, you're a big Star Wars guy? Man, I mean, I, I just was fed it so much. Now, this was on the re-release in the mid-'80s. We had discs, the, the laser discs, and I had like seven movies, and one of the seven was that. Indiana Jones, <laughs> Star Wars New Hope, some cartoons, some Kermit, that kind of deal. And we only had three TV stations, so I would just watch those over and over and over again. Uh-huh. So, yeah, early stuff, massively into it, and then slowly losing interest. <laughs> so uh, now you have, like, Star Wars overload on stuff. There is so much. Mm-hmm. There's, too, there's, there's too much. There's way, 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 way too much. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Give us your questions for Ask the Bench Warmers on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. One more with us here on 100.7 The Score. Clint Scott, Jeff Haxton, Lucas White behind the glass taking care of us. And uh, one more reminder coming up here in 15 minutes after we're done. It is the bottom line. And they will be live from outside of the Raymar compound yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why you ask? Why why brave the outdoors? Well, to, to hey, right now today's <laughs> the day. There's doors open all over this building because of just how nice it is, and they're out there setting up as we speak. The sun is shining. Yeah, it's gorgeous out there. Really couldn't have picked a better day right. for it. Uh, the Texas Rangers World Series trophy will be here in the Raymar parking lot. You can come swing by. You can come say hi to the guys there on the bottom line. You can also get a picture with the World Series trophy. Can't run off with it, but uh, you can take a picture with it. It's pretty cool. So uh, come swing by in the parking lot and do that. It'll specifically be there from 1 to 3. Potluck is on on another level, and I got clearance from Rick Gilbert. So (laughs) Rick said, I heard you on the radio. You get in here and you can eat. And I was like, all right, dude, that's all I need. (laughs) Rick's a good in. That's a that's a that's a good Rick too. No, oh, I've heard it up and down the hallways for all these years. <laughs> He's got his wife in there. <laughs> Looks uh, like she's the cook. I forgot last time I was here with Collier, why I stumbled coming in to ask the bench warmers and said, "Ask the inch warmers." <laughs> Bullfighter said, "Inch warmers." <laughs> <laughs> 
People just don't forget. No, they, they don't forget up, U.S. Man. Uber markets either. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what would your baseball version of Space Jam look like? Ooh. I had fun with a football one. Uh, Bobby Witt would obviously be Michael Jordan. <laughs> Don't you roll your eyes. Gunnar Henderson's the monster. Yeah, you take him. All the Orioles are on the monsters. Lucas? I think you have to have every single monster from the steroid era. Oh, yeah. You got to have Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Rafael Palmeiro, Andy Pettit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good start. Uh, Bonds. You get those are your monsters. That's, now, yeah, that's I don't know who your hero would be though. Yeah. Uh, current version, I kind of like to. I actually, I show I hey. Yeah, he'd be a good one. I made the the Orioles joke, but if you really want to do a present day one, you could just do Jamie's Yankees, and they could just all be the monsters. Trout would be so boring. I mean, he, he, personality wouldn't resonate everybody would be like yay yeah. our hero <laughs> <laughs> he'd probably be excited to be on the tune squad uh, yeah. mark mcguire as a uh one of the bad guys <laughs> hitting uh 900 foot dingers <laughs> obviously we probably all just want george brett as the hero right that's where we're all residing in right now you could be <laughs> I'm just gonna keep throwing out. I'm just gonna keep throwing out. Royal Steve Bouchel, <laughs> Julio Franco. Uh, we could have could have some Timmy Trumpets action in there. We're talking about him. Mm. Surely doom, he'd make his doom, there. Doom, 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 mm. doom, doom, doom. Uh, this on the chat line. T Money said, "Would have to get up by 5 a.m. to get enough beer in me for a 10 a.m. kick." <laughs> Please give me 10 p.m. So I can drink all day. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, ask, no rush. Ask the bench warmer's favorite ballpark. Favorite ballpark. We're I, talking. Um, he put the big base, leagues, or yeah, he, I would, I would, I would venture to guess you could for you because you've got a lot more ballpark experience. You could probably go wherever you wanted on any level. Um. My favorite, and this hurts, but it, it's just the best, is uh, Bomb Stadium in Arkansas. I have some unbelievable memories there. Not many heartbreakers over there somehow because they've been so good. Um, that stadium is fantastic. Um, it's I put it just ahead of the new Oklahoma State Stadium with all the millions they poured into that. Oh, Brate's fantastic. You can't believe you can't believe you're sitting in Stillwater and you can't believe you're sitting in Fayetteville with those stadiums. Um Texas ballpark is fantastic. Um TCU's okay, but you, they again they sit us outside. Uh TCU does have a terrific row of vendors where you can get some really good food. Um, big leaguers, let's see. You know where I got to get? I, I still haven't seen a Rockies game at the Rockies. Point. That is, it's funny you say that. Gus and I had this conversation about a month ago and a list of like a park that I want to go see a game at is at the Rockies yeah. place. I can't imagine it'd be that expensive right now. Either. <laughs> and I'd love to see a game at Mile High. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's I funny. still haven't been to an NFL game. What am I saying? I go anywhere. I I have been to one professional game in Denver, and it's funny. Out of all of them, it was a hockey. It's the only professional hockey game I've ever been to when the Knights and the Avalanche were playing there at the Pepsi Center. I saw the the Blues play. I got lucky. My dad took us up to watch it. NCAA basketball regional, and then squeezed in between that, we went and watched the Blues play. And that was a really cool trip up to St. Louis, mm -hmm. which I'm not a fan of St. Louis at all. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Sorry, Gus. I, I hate it. <laughs> this sucks. You and your uh, bridge. Yeah. You and your everything. Um I I, I like Kaufman. I, I love I love Kaufman Stadium. It's a great stadium. I'm worried that it's only gonna be about seven more years of it being able to be experienced before it's in Johnson County or something. I kind of felt like that was my home stadium being up there in Tulsa. You could be there. 
fast. Mm-hmm. And then once you got there, it's just always been a relaxed, cool, you know, just a cool place to watch a game. Mm-hmm. Where does uh? Well, and and I would say uh, just for the entire Americana baseball feel is Fenway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was just have again heaven. Yeah. Uh, where does uh where does UCF rank on those uh? Wasn't that the uh the game where you had oh three, yeah the you concrete had, you you had this view the entire concrete time pier right, right look around. <laughs> Clint, I've had so many of those. <laughs> I got I got stadiums that make that place look like um the new Yankee Stadium. I mean. Sitting in stands on a cell phone for hours and hours. I mean, you know, deer, deer blinds and all kinds of stuff. Just saying, please, please don't let it rain. There's nothing I can yeah, do. There's nothing it. I can do. <laughs> uh, this on the chat line. I went to my first NFL game this year. I saw the Chiefs in Vegas. I bet that was a blast. Sweet. Uh, Coors Field is nice. This on the chat line. My in-laws live down the road from Baum in Fayetteville. It's cool. Uh, do I, bench warmers? Do either of you have a song stuck in your head right now? Yeah, I just got Timmy Trumpet. Uh, I told you at a break. I still have the Cantina Star Wars song stuck in my head. <sighs> awesome. This on the chat line. Yet Mike McCarthy has a sunshade at the media room podium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Saw that. I don't. <laughs> I'm not like rooting for McCarthy, and I'm certainly not like rooting against. But I f- I feel bad for him out of everybody because he's the one that's like, caught in the crossfires out of all of this. And I still respect the ability to uh, still try to stay lighthearted and like walk into a room like that, like oh that for the sun and make a little joke. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Uh, this on the chat line, John Harris has the Chewbacca. Oh. <laughs> We were uh, listening, you know, yesterday was the anniversary of the 62-yard field goal, the woo kick, if you will. Mm. And woo, woo kick. <laughs> incredible call. And uh, speaking of the John Harris Chewbacca, that's like you always know that groan, something's good, great about to, uh, is about to happen. But an underrated part of that call is real quick. You know, he says it's off the foot, and it's not, it's not the long groan. It's Harris in the background. He just goes, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh-huh. it's so good. Oh, man. Hey, guys, this was fun. Thanks for I having had a me blast. Hang out. Yeah, I'll come back anytime that you'll have me. Have a good call tonight with your play, your playoff game. Thank you. I'm excited. Yeah, again, Ida Lutulia, Sunny 97.7, 5 o'clock, 5.30, Monterey, El Paso, Bel Air, 93.7, the Eagle, 6.30 right here, 100.7, the score, Lubbock Cooper and El Paso. Canatillo for Hacks, for Lucas. We'll say thank you for joining us. We'll be back at it same place, same time tomorrow. Come out to Raymar. Texas Rangers World Series trophy will be out in the parking lot as the bottom line goes from 12 to 3. Thanks, and have a great rest of your Thursday. This has been the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 107thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.